I'm sure it'll be interesting to people who use these things, like myself, and I'm sure you guys. So, uh, how about it? Well, there we go. Okay, well, um, we've got three things to show. You're One, no. Okay. We good? Yes. Uh, we've got three things to show today. Uh, three things that have been updated in, in, over the course of the last. Uh, well, it's been they're being released, soon to be released, or, um, or uh, have been worked on over the last few years. Um, the first one that, that I'm showing is uh, a demonstration of Eyebrows 2.5 OS4 Power PC native. Um, this is uh, something that has been in the works that I've been beta testing probably for about 10 years, and they've been releasing updates to it across testers uh, pretty much on a, on a continuous basis. And, and uh, looking at the release notes, there have been literally hundreds of bug fixes and refinements and uh, things to increase already the great reliability of this program for um, browsing. It still uses a, um, a uh, HTML4 engine, so it's not going to be giving you the experience that you'd expect to see in, in Firefox or uh, WebKit or even Odyssey, but the real thing about it is the speed. Um, you know, just to reiterate the speed of it, that's the starting time for the browser. Um, the uh, uh, layout of it is, is essentially familiar for what most people will remember. You've still got the ability to go and drag, grab hold and drag uh, um, the uh, components of the GUI and all that around if you want your drag bar up here. Um, hard to do that on this screen. If you want to uh, open up your, uh, change your GUI, you know, what? <laughs> I just hit a bug. <laughs> Um, I just hit a bug that has been lurking around with um, what we've been fighting with for the last few months. And um, that's pretty good. We thought we had this fixed. Um, that's one for Oliver to look at. Um, so back to my browser again. Drag. There's a bug that if you drag elements in the goop of the um, of the uh, interface, every once in a while it calls the interface to redraw itself and change the whole thing. And it's just snapped it to the old configuration of my monitor at home. Went off the side of the screen basically. Um, so. The interface is generally the same. It's been refined, as I said. Um, one of the features now is that you have a much more uh, sophisticated ability to set up a search. Um, you know, I've got uh, Wikipedia always as the first search because it seems like I'm always going there. And um, right now I'm on Wi-Fi, so it's not exactly the fastest connection in the world, but. You get a little bit of a sense of how much faster this browser is than, than maybe the old versions that everybody might be used to. Um, hey, it's all the computers now. This is running on SAM 440, so it's a 666 megahertz, um, you know, G3 level computer. It's basically about as slow as a uh, as a uh, OS4 machine as you can get. It's just 512 meg RAM, 64 meg uh, graphics, and um, so, you know, you put this on a 5000 or something like that, and when you get into sites that have got a lot of JavaScript, the delays that we'll see here in a moment are substantially lower. And, uh, you know, as I said, this thing is still using an HTML4 engine, and it's the JavaScript engine that was custom written as part of, uh, of Eyebrows. Um, you know, fine, perfect for doing things with uh, you know, our regular Amiga websites, and um, even with the Wi-Fi, I mean, it 
It's a nice, fast browser. It's um, reliable. It's bulletproof. Generally, the only times I've ever had problems with it is when you go to a site that has a lot of heavy JavaScript and you've got to deal with it and get out of it. And uh, It's something that I can leave sitting on my desktop all day long playing animations or doing something like that and, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't crash the system. It's not like Odyssey where you have a problem that is constantly consuming memory. It won't release and eventually if you just leave it sitting there, it's going to kill your system depending on the website you're on. And, um, you know, they're, uh, um, you know, you've got multiple tabs you can be opening for things. Um, Amiga World. Um, when you get to a newer site, you've got the situation that the HTML5, you basically are going to get a simplified version of the HTML5, but the nice thing about that is it still makes for a fast site, and the content is generally there. Um, you just don't have the, uh, the uh, um, delays of letting it render all the uh, advertisings and plant all the trackers and all the rest of it. Um, uh, depending on the website and how well it's, how standards compliant and well written it is, I'll do my own self-serving. Uh, when we put this website together, we made sure to make it that it was all um, those guys. Yeah, those guys, exactly. You know, but the whole website is, um, is was written to be HTML4 compatible and written and used in, uh, in um, any browser, really, not just Mozilla. <laughs> it's, uh, and, uh, you know, so you get a sense for the speed of the thing and uh, all of that. Um, the, uh, the browser internally, like I said, it's had many, many updates. Obviously, the biggest thing is it's recompiled for OS 4. So it's PowerPC native. The graphics are PowerPC native. The engine is PowerPC, the JavaScript, everything. Um, there was at one point even a Morph OS port of it, but the Morph OS, the, whoever it was who was doing the port of that vanished. So there haven't been any updates for that one in a long time. Um, I know Oliver, well, I've been, sorry. Um, Oliver uh, was looking for people, anybody who would help, be able to help them with the port to that. So there's going to be a 68K version of the browser as well as the PowerPC version. Um, but OS 4, the browser now uses OS 4 alpha channel, it's alpha channel support. Um, it supports files over 4 gigabytes if you need to download an ISO. I downloaded an ISO of Linux on this thing and it just downloaded it, no problems. Um, it actually initially was downloading it fine, just showing the numbers wrong. So it said it was downloading two gigabytes, then it started downloading backwards back to zero, and then it started downloading to negative two gigabytes, then back up to zero, and then it finally finished off somewhere. The f download was perfectly fine. The GUI just needed to be tweaked to recognize something bigger, exactly. It was, and uh, so, you know, classic Amiga programming. It works. <laughs> it just needed to be tweaked a little bit so it looked right. Uh, <laughs> so, as I said, there's the um, an improved enhanced search ability. These are just a bunch of search entries that I put in there, you know, so you could come over here and you'll, you'll get a sense for like how it works on, uh, there's uh, YouTube, search for Amiga computer. Again, like I said, it's the HTML5 and all is simplified. The ads are stripped, but you know there you've got um, uh, the um, you know the results. And of course, being an Amiga, you have the benefit of also being able to um, use plugins and use ARX and things like that. So even on this little 440, um, uh, there you know you can use the YT Rex script. To um, you know, play videos off of um, YouTube, you know, and uh, it's all asynchronous. You can see this thing sitting here somewhere in the background. 
stick it over there if you have bigger than a 1280 screen and go, <laughs> go on your way, you know, searching for, uh, you know, whatever else you want to look for, right? Um, and uh, so, you know, this is the benefit. You've got a browser that, you know, if I was trying to configure Firefox on my tablet and I opened up the um, settings and it was about 15 items, you know, settings on, on uh, settings in eyebrows are quite voluminous. And if you want to tweak anything, you've got damn near anything you want. You can set how it's decoding images. Here you set up all the menus. Here you have all the fast link buttons. You know the URL search. You know all the search links that I have built in there. Um, it now uses any SSL four, so it's using the latest encryption. Um, look, it's Solly's <laughs> juggler. Um, so you know, it's uh, it's a it's a real pleasure to use to leave it there. When you do fit, hit a page and you want to have something opened up in uh, Odyssey, Oddity, you know, again, Arex, run it in Oddity. Um, I've got personally a script set up for Oddity that wipes it clean after every use. So um, you know, I right click on a page that I don't like the way it looks in uh, eyebrows. I can load it in a, in Oddity, and it's uh, a simple thing. But you can update. <laughs> yes, I know. I've tried that too, and it keeps telling me what operating system. Yes. Um, you know, but it, it's it's astonishing to me how well the HTML4 browser and eyebrows works on things. You know, as you can, things are fast. <laughs> you know, I've still got um, here Amazon. Amiga computer, let's see if they have any Amiga computers for sale. <laughs> yeah, again, simplified page. There's, there's uh, C64. There's uh, that book you were looking at, uh, Steve. You won't be able to complete the sale of the thing, but you can go over here and again, move it to oddity. And um, you saw how fast this page lit showed up when uh, when it came in. Um, then you get to wait for Oddity to load it. So while that's happening, <laughs> um, you know, there are all the features, the things that are built into this thing, like uh, you have the ability to um, get out of the way. Uh, you still have always the ability, as you had always before, you can look at the source code of a page. You can go in and change things in the page. Um, if you're actually on a simpler website, you uh, <coughs> That's a nice simple page that I trust the source to. <laughs> um, yeah, there's the source code to the web page. And um, And you can edit this, and it'll live update the, everything that's in there behind. Um, uh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, can, you, you can actually edit the source of uh, the page on some other site, and you click update, and it, it renders the altered version. Within eyebrows, right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You can see how you can roll something, you can fix it. Just for your people, I was thinking about mock-ups and making trouble. Right there. Take Hello, Amy Quest. Amy something. Uh, fix the typo. Uh, Quest. Amy Quest. Quest. What a great company. I know. <laughs> there you go. You know, so if you're building a web page, you can actually come up with the web page however you want. You want to go in and tweak it, tweak it right there in that this editor. Uh, if you want to use your own editor, you just click the E button and there you have it in, in Notepad that the you know editor I've configured it to work with. So, um, so highly recommended, guys. I like eyebrows. I love eyebrows. The interface is fabulous. Uh, boy, I wish they had a HTML5 engine. Unfortunately, they are not at this moment intending to work on that because 
uh, they would either have to implement somebody else's engine or do a massive amount of work. So, but the idea is to come up with the world's best HTML4 browser for 68K and for PowerPC. And uh, right now, as I understand it, the talk is that it's gonna should be available in spring. Obviously, we still have a few bugs to chase down. Um, little things like uh, you know why why aren't the uh, little plus signs showing up? I'm not sure about that. And uh, the GUI resizing bug, which we thought we had fixed last Friday. Um, so, any questions about eyebrows? First off, Trevor, sometime in the spring. And I I believe it's going to be both for sale and for an update. They still want to have it as a paid, paid product. How much sir, can you have I, to charge? I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, this is all still, there's essentially Stefan is the owner of this, and Oliver um, has been uh, the one working on it. Um, so I would suggest you know, you uh, go to keep an eye on uh, keep an eye on their website, Stefan Borstrom, and uh, he's the, uh, then the Oliver Roberts is, is uh, the one that really has been doing the work on it lately, make most of it. But he's really focusing on things like GUI issues and things like that. Um, Oliver Roberts is also the source of work data types. So he, he's implemented the code, um, a lot of the code from work data types within Hyperlines to make to optimize the rendering. Um, Dave Fisher used to work on it a lot, another OS4 uh, developer. I haven't seen him lately. And, uh, so really, it's all in the hands of Stefan. Uh, Stefan, we believe, is going to pick it up in the spring. So, Steve? Is this really the debug version? <laughs> this is the debug so version. This is slow. Um, it says it's slow. Uh, <laughs> and well, you know, I can, I can run the other version, um, but the other version this doesn't, is slow. doesn't support it. The, demo version that I've got, which I assume is the one they'll put up for free on, on, on uh, AmyNet, looks like that is limited to only two tabs, and it's limited to um, only four search items. So it's it's um, kind of inhibits a little bit the ability to, to show you what um, you know what you can do. With the thing. Um, so you can still question. control the number of simultaneous threads. Yes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You can. You, what do you see as, as being the, the optimal setting for like? I, I gotta say I haven't I have not messed with it that much because it's it's um, I don't it always seems to me that's not the bottleneck right now the yeah. bottleneck is either you have sites that load fast in eyebrows and they're there and they're they blast in and you're good uh, at that point the bottleneck is probably more roadshow than anything else or maybe data types uh, when you go to modern sites the bottleneck is always 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 JavaScript. You know, you hit JavaScript and eyebrows can just go out and start chewing away for 10, 20 seconds. And it'll pop up a requester and say, there's a script still running, do you want to let this thing keep going? Um, I have been, Albert and I have been going back and forth on trying to come up with a way to maybe help that situation. That, that maybe you'll have a, uh, a way to interrupt the, uh, the offending JavaScript. You can always, um, you can also always uh, go into it and so there's a little icon down here, that a little clock that comes up when JavaScript is running. And I keep lobbying, well, make it, that, that's a button. And you can click on that button and uh, run. So there was a fast link button underneath it. I'm not used to running on the smallest screen, sorry. <laughs> um, so that you could click on that button to kill the, the, um, uh, to kill the uh, uh, script. But, you know, it would be nice to have something. You could send it an AREX message and sometimes it's like, I, quit the, the previous version. Um, so. Any other questions on eyebrows, guys? Steve. Uh, those AREX macros, are those yours or included? Or um, the, I, I, like for example, I have one AREX macro that, uh, which I'm not even running right now. I have one that will save all the tabs you have in a session in the background. And so you can, that program right there, you can go and say, oh, yes, open tabs you had open before. And then that just sits in the background and tracks all the tabs you have open. If you quit, and then open it back up again. And again, I don't have it set up to 
let me run it again. I have to run it manually. It's not running in the background. Um, then uh, it will bring back the tabs. You know, like load them all back in transparent. Uh, you know, they, it's up to them if they want to bundle it with eyebrows. If not, then I'll put it out on, on the OS4 Depot. And, um, you know, you'll have that one. You know, there's the uh, the commands to, to open up, uh, for example, the, uh, uh, let's see here. I can't see the white on white, but to do the things with um, YouTube, for example, is really trivial. You could say, I want to play a video on YouTube. You just set up something called autoplay on YT Rex. You call the YT Rex script. You give it the URL, say silent and autoplay. That's it. And it goes and finds the link, plays the video. Uh, if you want to actually see all the videos that are in, um, uh, if you want to see which videos by size that are on YouTube, come back here. Just got to search on you on YouTube for um, that. If I come over there and right click and I just say open with YT Rex, it runs the same script, but this time it doesn't auto play. What it does is it scans through, finds all the videos that are there. Now you can decide. I want to play a 360 video, 360 and 240. On this little Sam, I wouldn't really dare to play much more than that. And then I have another script, not script, it's just a command that says. M player, play this URL. Do that. There's M player starting. So I'm streaming a video off of YouTube. Um, um, yeah, it's like. It's just about as fast and easy way to get something done as can be, and you don't have to deal with the crashes of audit. Would you be so. interested in, in, in putting together sort of an eyebrows essentials pack that includes like all these different scripts? Yeah, and we can easily do that. Yes, yeah. press install. Now I've got all all goodness. <laughs> yeah, I want a full script. Yeah, I want a full script. Any other questions, guys? On eyebrows? Full scripts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your brand new. If user equals you know, Solly. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next thing to show you guys is a program that you guys have seen here. If you've been here for the Dev Con, and I showed it in the uh, at the table. Let's see if Odyssey crashes. Will it crash? No. So here's my script for Odyssey. It's like it wipes the directory. It's a Clean it out. Get all the crap in there. <laughs> so, um, and uh, wow. that, that actually I used to on, the, on, a, uh, on a machine with more than 512K uh, RAM. I copy Odyssey to RAM and just leave it in RAM. I just wipe out all the cookies and all the caches and all the crap. And then it just leaves a nice clean, uh, nice clean um, uh, directory behind. And the next time you do it, it runs it clean from RAM. <laughs> In this case, it's doing it on a hard drive. Question four, does that mean if you run it in RAM, it runs faster? It starts faster. Uh, it generally doesn't, it runs a little faster because Odyssey awesome. tends to dump a lot of stuff to disk. Uh, that's so, and, you know, because I don't, I don't care about keeping a cache. Um, and as unstable as it is, it's like, like for just now, as getting my check-in for the airplane, I get on United, do my check-in, get out of Odyssey, do it as fast as I can, you know. Uh, and then I leave eyebrows running all the time, and I, that's how I look at all the stuff that I normally look at. If, that's why there's this whole list of buttons on the side. That that's my um, uh, you know, that's my regular reading when I have time. I just click my way down through all the buttons and dig and slash dot and you know all of that stuff. And you know, go look at dig or OS news and. and uh, Actually, and you'll see here with some of these sites that you see the clock here in the bottom corner. That's the JavaScript running, which on this machine is going to be slower, obviously a little 440 than it is on the 5000. 
the 5,000 is pretty much instantaneous. Um, uh, there's the little JavaScript clock right there, and it's chewing away. And if it has a problem, it's, it'll tell you, you know, do you want to kill this JavaScript? Um, but you know, there's there's OS News, and um, if I have a page that I actually want to see it again in Odyssey, just move it into Odyssey, uh, or move it into OWB. You know, so they're all um, easy ways to go and open it up in a browser when you need to, and close it out again. And hope you don't crash. <laughs> I.e., we yeah. really need a replacement for oddity. Um, so, any other questions on my part? Okay. Well, as I was saying, the next thing which, uh, which I was uh, going to show you guys was uh, there's an update here to CodeBench. And again, I'm playing. I'm showing you the beta version, which is the full the beta of the full version. Um, not the demo version. The demo version can only show one application, uh, one project at a time. And it's got a few other limitations and timeouts and things like that. Um, you know, the CodeBench, for all of you guys that may not know, is this integrated uh, development environment for the Amiga um, to try and make it just as modern and easy and support you in doing programming and to, like, to build projects um, and to compile them and to deal with it, with whatever you might be working on and so on. Uh, there's the, the main <laughs> toolbar that um, that uh, you use to open projects and things like that. You know, I opened up one of them that was in the recent projects window. Um, these are all the things I've opened in the last uh, last uh, week or whatever since I installed this uh, this version. Um, Looking at the code, you know, it, it gives you syntax highlighting and all of that. Um, the last version of this that Simon Archer released was four years ago here at Amy West. He, he, he released it online, he used it for the DEF CON. Um, since then, um, he's probably put in, I, I looked at the release notes files, that was version 42, we're now version 55. Uh, looking at the release notes, about one third of the release notes, comments, bug fixes, enhancements, all that, one third of them were done since the last release. So this is really, this program has gotten a lot of updating. Um, it still, you know, gives you the ability to compile your projects and uh, there it's running the compiler. It really liked it. <laughs> Volume down. Do that. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> um, you know, if you do have a if you do have a problem, then uh, you know, you get. Let's see here. Let's go make a mess of something that like is uh, easy to make a mess of. So you see, there's there's the syntax highlighting right there. It tells you what the function is, what objects it needs. If that's not good enough for you, you just double click on it. It gives you the release notes on the command, and you know. Uh, He's, he's implemented, as you can see here, code folding. So you can go in and fold, or you know, if you really want to, come over here and then just fold. Fold everything. CodeBench had always supported C, the primary programming language of the Amiga, and since pretty early on, it also also supports Hollywood scripting. Um, Simon also added the ability to have um, AREX projects. So now you can go on in and say, open up the CodeBench project, it loads it, you know, all the same highlighting, um, same code, uh, the all the, all the um, code folding and uh, 
So there's the whole program all folded up. That's now, really cool. Now you just see the, the <laughs> titles of the, of the functions there, right? We actually want to work on that one. Then you open that up, and there's that function opened up. You know, this is my mother of all diagnostics functions. Um, so folding is the big thing, and the addition of AREX as projects are a big thing. One of the really nice things that Simon added is the ability to mix your projects. So it's like you, you know, here's a C program that was just a uh, demonstration of how to write an AREX macro. But you know, it's it's an AREX macro project, so you know. Obviously, there has to be an AREX file. So there's the demo REX program. He's now got it so that you can have a project, a C project, but it also includes an AREX script. So you can now mix different types of code all within the same project. It's all within this one thing. Here's an AREX program. Uh, I believe the language is, I know we definitely support C, AREX, um, and uh, the editor handles other types of projects. Um, Python, Perl, CLI, HTML, they're all syntax highlighted and all that. So you could actually have a project that included writing the guide file, um, doing the HTML, doing everything all within one project and just open it up and here all your files. Right? Can you add different types of uh, uh, files, script files for instance? Uh, if I wanted to add a rebel uh, format to this, can I do that? Um, I think the I don't think you can because part of that to do the syntax highlighting, you have to have all the definitions of all the command of all the words you want to be um, highlighting. I so it would be a, yeah. So you'd have to, that information would have to be given to Simon, and you would have to build it into the uh, okay. into the uh, syntax that the rich text editor gadget recognizes. Okay. This is a text gadget here that. Um, it's very similar to the one that's built into Notepad, which um, you know, everybody knows Notepad. There's, there's our basic little Notepad, right? No S4. Simon actually even made something called CodePad, just as a proof of concept to go and see what happens if you actually stick that text editor inside Notepad. It's just a simple little thing that he did just to test the concept of it. Um, so, Plug and play in Amiga programming. Um, in, the, in addition, uh, he also made it so that when you have a project, you can um, turn in the project. Uh, when you open up a project, that's your settings for the project. You can control, you know, where it is, where it's kept, how it's debugged, you know, how it gets made, compiled, um, and then he's now got the ability to have targets, different targets, so you can actually have the project when it's compiled into a variety of different applications and different, um, uh, and I'm sure Steve would be able to speak to much greater detail about how this works and everything, but then you can c control this thing so it builds different versions. You might be able to have a, um, a Altebec version and a non-Altebec version and a SPE version, and all that gets built automatically just by hitting that build button down there and listening to the people clap at you. And in here, <laughs> and in here you can set up right now, you know, right here, you can say, okay, well, I, want, I want to create one here that's gonna be an Altavac, right? Now, granted, that right there is about as much as I know about programming for Altavac that I can write the name. But <laughs> there it is. Bravo. So, Bravo. Bravo. Yes. No, it's not gonna cheer now. <laughs> That'll just blow up. <laughs> um, he added support for GCC5, um, so it's, he's, he's providing more support for newer, newer uh, um, uh, compilers. Uh, you know, he's got you know, it's a it's a you know you've seen the syntax highlighting and uh, the uh, help. Uh, online help. Oh, that one doesn't have it. Uh, this is AREX. He hasn't put. He hasn't got the AREX online help working yet. I've been harassing him about it. <laughs> so, uh, but you saw the online help. Um, oh, look at that. Do it. <laughs> Shall we live dangerously? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
said, Simon, <laughs> Stephen wants to see it go down in flames. He added spell check. Uh, the spell checking, I think, still needs refinement, and he's working on it for, um, for, uh, uh, oh, yes, that's right. I don't want to turn it off. That's what I was doing before I started. These are all the configurations for the program. Uh, the general configurations. It's obviously very configurable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Ye of little faith. Spell checking. Check from here. It warns you about checking source code because yes. Uh, so you know, I think it basically it needs. It, uh, oh, you got to train it. You got it. I, I'm. Well, see, that's the thing, which i got to find out from Simon exactly what to do about training it. But the mechanism is there, the machine. Oh, no reason. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> he says eerie. I know. There's, 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 there's no weapons. He's like, <laughs> Are you watching him, or is he with you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not uh, and so, uh, and there's now unlimited undos and redos and uh, all of that. But, it's, but it's, why can't we buy it? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't he need beer? Beer. We'll send beer. Maybe you have to stop him from getting beer until he sells it. Whatever. Unfortunately, he has a day job and he buys beer with that. Money and beer. I know. Right. Crisps. Yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, yes. Okay. Simon, if you're listening, sell it. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Any questions? Uh, is this version available for download, or is it just sort of a secret project that we don't? Know? Nope, it is. It is available. It, okay. It's uh, the demo version of it is available. Available. No, do not save that. <laughs> so, ah, the DSI has come back on me. It's come to get you. <laughs> yes, it has. Yeah. Um, come. yeah, sooner or later. It's like you're just tiptoeing in a minefield now. Um, the, uh, the demo version is already online on Simon's website. It's, uh, the website is codebench.co.uk. Yes. And if you go to the downloads page there, it's, it's on there. It should be on there. It is on there, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I think that's where we downloaded it from. So uh, it is available, the demo version. The demo version is limited to one project open at a time, and there's a little time out at the beginning. Um, I think there may be a couple more things in there that might be limitations, but you've got to see what the, what the, the primary biggest feature of uh, the full version is the ability to open multiple files. Um, yes, that's, that's my uh, attempt at security. Hey, it's just enough to keep some bozo in and out of the parking lot from being able to open my computer. I figured. <laughs> Um, oh, look, our Wi-Fi is just beautiful here. It's just wonderful. Does he have the ability to trace back the origins of function calls and references within the code? Um, so if you're looking at a call to a function, highlight on it. He has. Can he pop back to the I believe I believe he does. Um, and that was actually a pretty recent addition to this program that because um, I know it shows you that, that it's help as you type A-H-Y-T is this hinting that comes up. And yeah, so, you got assisted uh, so creation of the line, which is, which is terrific. Yeah, I have the it's dictionary just, set to import every single last thing it can. <laughs> so it takes a little while, this machine. But yes, I, I mean, it shows you what the, the definition of the function is. Right, but and, if you want, if it's your own function or if it's function you've got access to source code that you're building from, and you want to go back to the source of the function, kind of do that for you automatically. Something I use all the time. Yes, and uh, let's find out, shall we? Um, first, find out what we have for it. Okay. Those sound effects are part of CodeBench. It's, yes, those sound effects are part of CodeBench. And, uh, I think they're not. Yeah. Um, you can actually set, turn them on and off, and you can set, um, where the heck is that function called? <laughs> 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 I 
It's a little too simple, maybe. Uh, yeah, I know, but there is a function there, so it's got to be in here somewhere. It's got, you have system function. I don't oh, wait, there it is, right. No, that's uh, new object. I would change the one. What I'd like to be able to do is highlight on like new object and trace back to the uh, source of new object. Well, new object is system <laughs> source, yeah. Exactly. So that's as far as you're <laughs> getting. But you can, I mean, for example, you can come over here and say, see, you know, attributes, and you could go to there. And you yeah. can keep bouncing yeah, around that's through those. In right? the documentation form. In the which documentation is, right? Yeah. Um, do, you, and, do you have a sub function in there that you can actually jump to? You could create a little one, just do a foo or something, and then call it. Like the, the uh, oh. replay callback button. That's where does, what it where does that go? There, you, there go. you go. That's what I'm looking for. Voila. Yeah. And then you've got the. Uh, um, back button. No, that's the jump to line. Um, that's something to add. We need a back button. Yeah, back to where you went. Sure. So. What I'm using now, actually, you can. You're browsing back, it jumps back to your previous cursor positions right. within the file, and then back to the previous files. I know, right. and, the whole thing. and it, it keeps the it keeps the cursor position saved whenever you save a project, and it keeps the folding saved. It's actually a setting you can compare. Do you want to keep it everything folded up with just one function open that you're working on? It will save it that way, and so on. I mean, there's a ton of settings in that program that allow you to tweak things, and, and Simon's been. Uh, fabulous, you know, adopting features that I've asked for and pleaded with him for. I'm in the release notes being scolded and warned about. <laughs> does it um, um, handle a GPB? It does, uh, but it, um, I know I know there's support for GDB because it's in the. Uh, but frankly, I don't know how to use GDB, so I'm like, uh, yes. There's, and it does allow you to put debug symbols in the in the in the code, so you can actually have to make a debug version of anything you by just checking that box right there. Um, as you see here, it it's everything is well hinted, so it gives you a description of what's going on and, and uh, um, you know what it means and so on. And uh, there is in the. Save, save, don't save. Um, but any other questions? Yeah. What's what's the status of the old uh, disk CC command, the distributed compiling functionality? Is that in use? I did that. You did that. What's the status of it? It's fine. Does it work? What well, what what do you need for a client and server? I mean, pieces on different boxes for. But you're doing remote CC. Yeah, but you're doing it from the one machine and then sending compiles across to the other machines. It's a networked distributed compile system. Yeah. Right? As I remember. Have you used and it with this? It's updated all the time. Okay. <laughs> with code bench. Code bench? Nah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> we all make fuss. No, we're still. Just see. Um, that is a valid question, though. Okay. Does this thing let you just drop in, maintain with your own main files, use everything else? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you could go in there and it's a, you know, in the in the um, you've got the make files. You can either have it make the make file. I mean, yeah. for example, the DevCon Here's we use make file. yeah that and then just exactly. let it run. Yeah, and, and more make your own make file and set it in there. Um, well, you just put this CC in front of the compile name, right? And because I, mean, I know that there are some where people. Where's this compiler? Where's it? Native GCC, yeah, VBCC, or specify. No, but you have to be able to edit. There you go, and it yeah. puts yeah. CC in front of it. Right. right, you're done. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the deal on the clients, though? I don't remember. So I, I, I want to, I want this to take and compile pieces on my Linux server. And yeah, it'll just do it. Yeah, but I need something on the Linux server. Yeah. Right. But you have to put just CCD. Like right, Linux. Right. That's that's the piece I'm wondering about. Well, you have to get it for Linux. Where's that? I don't know. Wherever. You Just you CC. Don't worry. Install it. <laughs> but and there is a uh, a, a server for version for the Amiga. Probably a package somewhere. There is a server version for the Amiga. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it's whatever platform you want. Just install the daemon. 
Yes, it's where to get the demons, that's what I'm wondering. Or where to get the that's source my business. Things. It's this CCD, right? He wrote it, didn't you? No, 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 I did a port to Amiga. Oh, demons? Well, yeah, there's a daemon oh, for uh, Amiga, oh, too. Oh, oh, oh. Wasn't it wasn't Amiga your Amiga project. Again, okay, sir? It okay. wasn't your project to begin with. No, no. He's all right. So it's out there. So that means you could install this on a bunch of your Amigas and then have them all Any compiled machine. again. Any machine. Yeah. Well, no, no, Amigas. Come on. Oh, you said, <laughs> it's, it's the proper structure. Your, your, your bigger metal is serving the Amiga. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Obviously, we can go over things at, at the table when I take this yeah. back there. So that's kind of outside food bench. Yes, exactly. So if you want to look at it, or yeah. obviously eyebrows, and you want to try it, um, yeah. I have it there. Um, <laughs> The, uh, so it's this build of it, uh, the uh, special edition, or just the demo version, that's the one we got with yes. DevCon? Yes, yes. So he, he, he literally released the new version and put it online while we were sitting there. I remember, morning, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We um, tried it out. So yes, we tried it out. We loaded your juggler in it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, first try. Well, for me, the second, but well, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm special. Uh, but no, we just downloaded the juggler sample that Steve posted. Yeah. Literally, open up the archive, point this at it, you come over here and you say, new project. You tell it you want to open up a C project. And then you're in that same project settings window and you just say, juggler. And then go and point that at the directory where the program is. And what else did we have to set? Target. What's that? Target. Target. You have yes. to give it a <coughs> Target. Juggler. Juggler. Turn off auto. Check OK. OK. Build script not found. Oh, it was found. Yeah, well, there's going to be the old build script. Do you want to use the old build script or turn off automation? No, we'll make it make a new one. So, that's the new project. We haven't added a file to it. So we come over here, hit source, this, and then we add all the C files. It's loading all those files in. You see I'm adding it to the list here, project files. Come over here and hit header files. Load all the header files, everything in the .h. Close all those. Save the project. Build it. So that's all it took to run the juggler. You click the run button and hit there. Yeah. And there's the juggler. That's it actually. That's the best demo ever. There you go. Yeah, first try. I, yeah, well we we did try it a few times on Thursday, but you know, I mean and but that's Literally, anybody who's fast. watching this could do it that fast at home. Well, let's grab it. I'll take and uh, create a uh, code bench project for the SDK browser so, source. Then when I'm busy, it's. I mean, I think it's. Yeah, I've got my own main files to build everything. As right? one who's been trying to learn C in very That's slow, so halting fashion, and one who hacks on AWS quite a bit, it. this is just a wonderful <laughs> thing to work with. So. Um, so the last thing I had to show you guys was, uh, now we get to see the fun things about the window closed. Yeah. It's a mystery. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. 50 50 shoes. <laughs> yeah, no. There, there's something that the juggler program uses the most ancient calls to intuition to open the right. window, and it doesn't clean up after itself when it closes. So you end up with this ghost that the juggler is still on your desktop until you, until you open a, a, a a window, I drag it around on top of it to like make the thing go away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw that. So the last program is uh, this this uh, new version of Amigo A Organizer by Andy Broad, and um, so it's a calendar program. That it's a sub program called Diary, and uh, it's something I've been beta testing with Andy all all year long. And um, the new feature that he added to this program is the ability to sync with Google and to import and export VCAL files or ICS files. And so, I want to try that. Uh, you know, I just have it set up on the, under a command, uh, left shift Amiga D, and uh, you 
you get the calendar program, and it's running all the time. And you know, here's your uh, this week. Here's all my Amy West stuff and my flight information. And you double click on something, and it gives you the information of what I've set into that appointment for what's going on, and my flight here is sent to uh, California. Um, you've got uh, month view. See, I'm using this program a good bit um, these days, so it's, uh, you know, all, and then you, you double click on something to add a, uh, double click on the date to add an event, and um, so you can come over here and say, okay, what do you want here? Time. You can set alarms. You know, if you want to have an alarm that goes off, sound, place sound, or notify. Um, create the event. So on Thursday the 19th, I set up an event to go hack Mega hacking. And if I get on my phone, the beauty of this thing, the invaluable thing here is, there was that little hit of CPU load that you see going by right there. On well, this little 440, there's a Python set of Python scripts that Andy wrote that basically connect to Google, automatically upload the same to the event. So if I go to my dire, uh, calendar here on the, uh, so if I go to my calendar here, it's not there yet, but I come over here and hit sync now. second column right there was the Amiga hacking. And then so I can come in here on my um, Amy West hacking, and if I come in here, for example, and say, trash the event, delete, it's deleted off my phone. Come back over here to my Amiga, and either you can let it sit there and just sync every, it doesn't once every minute or whatever you set it to. But for the sake of our purposes, I'll tell it to sync right now. You see that little hit on the CPU right here. There's Amy West hacking. Go away. Go away. <laughs> oh, wait. I do have to force my phone to sync. You're right. So now, there we go. Exactly. So that's synced. There we go. Do this again. Sync diary. Amy West hacking. Um, you know, and I've been using this a lot for, for uh, um, things these days. And it's like, you can go in here and, uh, and uh, you know, I know I've got um, work meetings and things like that. And, uh, you know, they, if you import a VCAL file, like for example, if I go to my, uh, I go to my shell account, it's always a price. where my email, all my email stuff is. Uh, I know I had gotten an email, oh, there it is. Brian James, and he, um, says, there are scripts there for exporting events, importing events, searching the diary. In this case, I just downloaded this that I got from a, uh, this was an event that I got in an email from somebody at the uh, I don't know, contractor or the county, Fairfax County, I believe it is. So there's the event. It's telling you you're going to see the event first, either import, take it or not. So there's the everything that was imported from that email, the VCAL or ICS file. This is all the text that he had in the file. Uh, Customer Advisory Council, October 31st. There's the one o'clock. Four, uh, two o'clock Eastern time zone, keep the event, and there it is. And uh, double click on it, the location is there, all that. Um, now, so I just imported it into this program. You see the hit right here that happened on the CPU? It automatically, when you created the event, 
uploaded it here to Google. And I tell my phone to sync for it. And there it is. The event, all the text that was in that event, now on my phone. Um, fantastic application. Wonderful that this thing exists. So. Um, Andy has got, he put in a huge AREX port in this thing. So obviously that AREX port is having, that AREX port is, uh, <laughs> I don't think he understands what, shh, <laughs> you can come in, Luca. <laughs> um, the AREX port, I mean, you know, the scripts, the scripts that you see here are the ones that Andy has provided to export and calendar events, you know. If you want to, you can come over here and say, okay, export, and, uh, you know, event.dc, there. And then you could, I have not tried this yet, I have to say, but, um, you know, there's the, the export file. I have not tried actually attaching it to an email and sending somebody with Outlook and having it then import it automatically and I really just don't care enough about Outlook users, so, but okay. <laughs> so, um, and uh, Andy has a program that's for sale, it's on Amy's store, I think it was like 10 bucks or something like that. I know. Yes, sir. About that too. Yeah, it's on the Amy's store. Before. It is, yes. Yeah. But um, I, I got a little... We had a little blurb about this last year. That's the reason he did it was to do his gigs because he's a blues musician. Yes. And uh, he uses Python because that's the API that was easiest to talk to Google with. Right. It's not that he wanted to. It's just oh, their, their API is so, you know. Yeah, I mean, the API, when I set this up, installing this program is tricky. It's so easy. Yeah. And it's got dependencies on ProAction, because ProAction provides him with a GUI for some of the things he does. Uh, and it relies on some Python classes and things like that. The installer literally checks your system if those three things are there. And it says, yes, you've got it, you're good. Or if you don't, then it, it goes and gets them and installs them. I mean, literally the installation is done in 15 seconds. Uh, syncing Amiga Organizer a organizer to Google was an exercise where um, you go into, there's a script he's got that initiates this uh, connection, that initial connection. What happens is you run the script, you type in your information on your Google account, and then it um, then gives you a hash code. No, actually, let me think about this. It gives you a URL. You open that up in Odyssey, and you're connected to Google. You log into Google there, and then you come to a page that gives you a hash code. You copy that hash code out, paste it in here, hit OK, done. From there on out, Google is synced to uh, your, uh, to Amiga, uh, to Air Organizer, uh, and from there on out, that syncing occurs. And um, we've been testing this, like I said, pretty, pretty much most of the year, uh, going through different you know, there were little things like when you have this text that you get from somebody, you didn't, you know, sometimes somebody can stick something in here that caused problems. We found out that brackets or something caused a problem. We had to fix it, you know, it didn't get parsed correctly. And, um, Andy is, is a very proactive developer, so um, he's been, uh, you know, chasing down bugs and releasing new versions of this thing on an ongoing basis, usually pretty much with a uh, pretty quick turnaround on everything. So, uh, any, any questions on this? Well, it uses, a, it uses a technology. So here's the about window and view documentation. Uh, okay, we will use eyebrows because eyebrow, eyebrows rules. Um, so the technology that it uses, I thought he had it listed in here, is um, Cal Dave. So a number of servers use that protocol for interaction 
for scheduling appointment type stuff. Um, neither he nor I have tried it on one of the other services that use that, but if it does, and you can manage to get that hash code to let this program talk to the, the server, work the same way as it just did with this. Um, but I, I can't say I know which services those are. Um, that, or you can always, uh, you know, offer Andy a pile of money and documentation and let him write it, do plug it, because I know he loves doing things like that. He's going to hunt me down and kill me now. <laughs> What? Did you get the kill order? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? And like I said, I, I have this obviously on the computer. You guys can try it out um, in, uh, at the table there. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much, guys. Next year we'll have <laughs> you.